What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back again with another video, man. And yo, SmackDown tonight uh, started off electrifying. Now, initially, me and Doug, we weren't going to stream uh, SmackDown tonight. In fact, I was at my grandmother's uh, before the stream started. So I wasn't going to be able to, you know, be back home and set up the stream uh, with the homie Dub. And Dub was watching his newborn at the time, uh, his newborn daughter. So, you know, he was just kind of chilling out or whatnot. So we weren't initially going to stream. But I checked my Instagram. One of the homies said, holy shit, The Rock is back. And I, I didn't want to believe it because I'm like, ain't no way. But I did see some rumors on Twitter uh, talking about The Rock is backstage because it's in Colorado. And he was uh, on the Pat McAfee show uh, in Colorado. They were, you know, talking to uh, uh, Coach Dion about the Colorado game versus uh, Colorado State. So he was there for the morning show. So it kind of made sense. But you see those rumors all the time like oh the rock is backstage or somebody else is backstage and you don't really see them on the show so when he said that i was like i gotta check this out so i opened up my laptop at my grandma's house i turned it to you know youtube tv turned it to fox and lord and just it, lo and behold it was right there i called him right when he walked out and he's just scanning the scene and the crowd's going crazy. I had to call Dub. I was like, yo, bro, The Rock is back. He's like, you lying. I was like, no, The Rock is back. He turned on the TV. I could hear his daughter in the background. And his little baby girl in the background. And, bro, he got lit too. So we started watching that a little bit. And then on my way home, uh, uh, we set up the stream, uh, the mobile stream. Uh, for you guys so shout out to everyone that was there for the impromptu stream uh i had to you know saying once my grandma was taken care of i had to rush back home uh i was on the live stream in the car you know what I'm saying trying to get back to the crib at a decent time to catch the rest of the show but man that was crazy and i was able to go back and watch the actual clip of when he first came out um uh, pat mcafee was having a little back and forth with Austin Theory or whatever Austin Theory being the heel that he is disrespecting the people in Colorado. And it was cool for Pat McAfee to even be able to kind of set it up for The Rock to come out there. And when he, when his music, if you smell, crowd went crazy. Just the atmosphere just turned up to 11 that quickly. Him in the ring. Everyone's going crazy. Everyone's phones out. Goosebump inducing. It was fantastic um fox um well not fox but i know wwe they they had a a, a quite difficult time uh because they had to mute a lot of what the crowd was chanting chant crowd was chanting holy holy shit <laughs> they were chanting that uh over and over so the crowd they had to mute the crowd completely um but this was just fantastic bro and unfortunately my boy austin theory once again got cooked <laughs> My boy Austin Theory can't catch a break. He stayed getting cooked. He got cooked. And The Rock didn't even have to do too much to cook him. Austin Theory about to get into his little heel promo bag or whatever or whatnot. <laughs> he was dis disrespecting Stone Cold. He's like, oh, you're back uh, once again uh, to face uh, face Austin. Talking about himself. He disrespecting Stone Cold. And bro, this was so funny. And this is why... The Rock is The Rock, and he's one of the few people that can probably get away with saying whatever on television, and who's going to stop him? My boy, in mid-sentence, told Austin Theory, Man, shut your bitch ass up. <laughs> I was dying. He said, shut your bitch ass up. Crowd went crazy. I was done. I was like, oh, yeah, he cooked him. All right, bro. And, he, and Austin Theory proceeded to shut his bitch ass up. That was it. He, bro, he cooked them easily. <clears throat> and he started talking about the people. He started talking about, you know what I'm saying? If, if Stone Cold were here, he'd whoop the can of, open the can of whoop ass on you. And then he started getting the crowd into it. He said, this side of the arena is going to chant, uh, chant you're a, and this side of the arena is going to chant asshole. You're a asshole. <laughs> 
So the crowd started cooking them, and they had to meet the the asshole part or whatever. So it, the crowd, the audio was going in and out. And then he's like, "All right, this side of the crowd is gonna chant Yura, and that side is gonna chant an asshole." And they went back and forth. Great moment, great great moment. Austin Theory fuming, mad or whatnot. And then he proceeds to say, "All right, what's about to happen is in the next few seconds." I'm going to lay up the smack it down on you, pretty much. And they start brawling. Austin Theory, Austin Theory started to get a little bit of the upper hand. But then, of course, The Rock starts charging up, laying laying down the smack if He's laying the smack if down on Austin Theory. Hit him with a spine buster. And you already know, the most electrifying move in all the sports entertainment. Hits the ropes. Hits the people elbow. Hits him with the people elbow so hard that... Austin Theory shoe comes off <laughs> when his shoes come off. So at that point, everybody's going crazy. And then my boy Pat McAfee got invited to hit the people's elbow. He hits the people elbow, elbow on Austin Theory. Great moment. And The Rock proceeds to throw one of Austin Theory's shoes into the crowd. And get this trash out of here. Great moment. Fantastic moment. So glad I was able to catch that. Some of that live, that was amazing. Was not expecting this. That was dope. It was a, if you were there at the arena, let me know down below. I know some of you guys be at the show. So let me know down below, how was that atmosphere? Because I know that was special. The Rock hasn't been on television, WWE television in quite some time. So I know everyone that was there had a special, special moment for that. So there was another special moment where... <clears throat> Pat McAfee is talking to The Rock or whatever, and John Cena's behind him or whatnot. And he's like, oh, Mr. You Can't See Me, man. It's right there. So The Rock turns around and like, yeah, I can see you. I can see you smiling. And, you know, they have their history rocking John Cena. Crowd went crazy for that. And, you know, they shook hands and hugged each other. And that was just a dope moment just to see them there together. In the same arena, on the same screen, and we know their history. So I thought that was a good moment. So um, I'm also just going on down the noticeable moments of the show. Um, LA, LA Knight versus The Miz. It was a solid match, enjoyable match uh, for what it was. Crowd is still very uh, hyped for LA Knight anytime his music hits. They had a nice promo package set up for this match. Um, Match was straightforward, uh, nothing too crazy, nothing too special, but the right person won. Uh, LA Knight hit his finisher clean, one, two, three, got him the hell up out of here. And as expected, I was hoping it was going to be like this. He had a clean, decisive win. He picked up the microphone, and this is where things got interesting. He's like, look, when I got to SmackDown live, when I got to SmackDown, I said I'm here for all the gold. So, if that's the United States Championship in Rey Mysterio, if that's the Intercontinental Championship in Gunther, if that's the World Heavyweight Championship in Seth Rollins, and especially, and he looked into the hard cam, hard cam zoomed in on his face, he's looking dead at the camera, and he said, and, and this is, goes especially for the WWE Undisputed Universal Champion, Roman Reigns. Yeah, I was like, oh, I like that. He, he put emphasis on that. So as he's walking back, they cut to a TV angle, and then you see Paul Heyman and, and Solo Sokoa watching. And Solo says, do you want me, uh, Solo's like, uh, do you want me to handle this L.A. night problem? I was like, ooh, we're getting somewhere. We're getting somewhere. They're teasing some type of interaction with the bloodline and L.A. night. I am all for that. Um, then they start talking about Jimmy and what's going to happen there and what should be done. And Paul Heyman's thing is, well, it hasn't come from the book, from the tribal chief himself, from Roman. So we can't do anything. And Solo said, you know what? I'm going to take care of what needs to be taken care of tonight. And he walks out and Paul's like, but Roman didn't say that yet. And Roman didn't give the orders. And I like that as Solo's starting to do things on his own more, which needs to happen. That needs to be more of a thing, and they need to keep building that up. There's a lot of little branching storylines that could potentially happen here, and I'm all for it. So we get to the main event. 
the Grayson Waller effect. Uh, you knew something was going to happen because it was the main event of the show. Uh, we got uh, Grayson Waller pretty much talking down to John Cena. John Cena not being able to get in one single word. So John Cena says, screw this, takes off the hat. Uh, they also did a little jab at, um, they, they started off the show, um, you know, whenever I, you know, we, we, you know, I'm talking to someone on a show, I like to take my hat off because my mother taught me manners. It's kind of a, a little, little jab at what, uh, Deion Sanders, coach Deion has been dealing with, uh, with his, uh, situation <laughs> with, uh, the other head coach for, uh, Colorado state saying, you know, when I'm doing press interviews and stuff, I take my glasses and my, and my hat off because my mother, mother taught me manners. And it only makes sense. They do that in Colorado. So I, I like that little jab, but John Cena wouldn't have it through his hat to the crowd, took his shirt off. He's ready to throw the hands. And before he's about to say anything, Jimmy Uso music hit. So he's like, oh, brother. And Jimmy basically comes out here saying, uh, <laughs> I like how he's called Grayson Waller. Kangaroo Jack is right over there. We don't want you around here, John. You, We don't need you around here. That people came to see, see me or whatnot. And if you disrespect me like that again, like you did a couple weeks ago, that's going to be an issue or whatnot. So I'm like, uh-oh. All right, so he want to run the fade with John John over here. Then all of a sudden, solo music hit. Solo walks down there or whatnot. And then Jimmy getting all high. Yeah, this, yeah, we about to, yeah, it's over now. And then Solo ends up <clears throat> turning on Jimmy. And it looks like he's about to give him the Samoan spike to Jimmy Uso. Jimmy's like, yo, what's going on? And then boom, super kick to John Cena. And then at this point, John Cena and Jimmy starts to, I said John Cena, Solo and Jimmy starts to jump John Cena. Grayson Waller's just watching in the back. Then AJ Styles runs down to the ring or whatnot to help out John. And they start getting into a brawl or whatever. And Solo gets knocked out of the ring. Jimmy's about to get the attitude adjustment. Paul Heyman's telling Solo to save Jimmy. And that's what happens. Solo ends up saving G Jimmy from the attitude adjustment. And then they proceed to back away. It seems like they may be setting up some type of tag team match. Solo and Jimmy uh, versus John Cena and AJ Styles. So I can see them setting that up for next week. Don't say I got the script. It's just it seems like they're setting up a tag team match for next week. Because uh, I believe I forgot to mention uh, Jimmy did cost AJ Styles his match. Uh, AJ Styles had a match with Finn Balor. And Jimmy was the reason why AJ lost due to interference. And also, apparently Finn Balor's on the recruiting page or the recruiting uh uh, recruiting wave because he tried to recruit Jay Uso on Raw and now he's also trying to recruit Jimmy Uso to be be a part of the Judgment Day since Jimmy did help him in his match against AJ Styles earlier in the night. So there's a lot of different things happening. So there's some interesting things happening. Uh, I know some people in the chat was hoping that The Rock was going to come out and interfere. I don't know. Um, it obviously, it didn't happen. We will see how things go forward. But he was on the show. Was it a one-off situation? I don't know. If it's not, then it may be leading to something potentially with him and Roman going forward. Maybe at next year's WrestleMania. I don't know. But either way, seeing The Rock on the show was fantastic, man. And there was a lot of good stuff on the show. A lot of good things that I'm looking forward to seeing what they do. Especially with LA Knight. That has me the intrigued the most. So comment down below. Let me know. Did you guys enjoy this episode of SmackDown? What was your favorite part of SmackDown? What was your least favorite part? What you rate the show on a scale of 1 to 10? But I appreciate all the love and support. Roll to 150K. And I am still young. Speed of YouTube. Wrestling champ of the world. Appreciate y'all kicking with me. See you on next one. Peace.